Hi, my name is Aaron Rhodes from Falafel Software. This video is the Telerik Rad Tree View Hierarchy Data Binding video. In this video, we'll take a look at how to bind to a data table to create a hierarchical data structure. During this video, there may be code examples written in either Visual Basic or C Sharp. However, the concepts are the same and code is provided for you in both languages. We'll begin by creating a new website. We'll use the Ajax enabled website so that the script manager is created. And that will allow us to use Ajax enabled controls. We'll use Visual C as the language for this one. And in the design view, we'll just r drop a rad tree view onto our form. And while that's loading, uh, let's talk about what we're going to do. Uh, let's say you want to create a program that organizes music into separate genres. And you know what those genres are, and you want to load those programmatically. Let's say you have data somewhere that that you, you can programmatically use to create a hierarchy of genres. Um, so we're going to take a look at how you could do that in code. This example is going to be entirely in code. So the only thing I'm going to do here for right now is change the skin to something lively. Let's choose the hay skin. And then let's go into code and see how we're going to do this. If I double click on the form, it creates a page load event. And I'm not going to use that yet. First, we'll create a method. that returns a data table. And the data table has columns. And we define the columns here. I'm going to define four columns. The ID is the number ID of the row. The parent ID we'll talk about, and that's how you establish a hierarchy. The text, and we're going to add one called color as well to add a little flair. Now, populating this data would be arduous for me to type here, so I'm also going to be pasting that in. And let's take a look at it. In the ID field, you see the numbers sequentially growing here. And the root items are country, jazz, rock, electronic, new age, rap and hip hop. And they all have null for their parent ID, and that's important if they don't have null, then they can't establish themselves as root nodes in the tree view. And then the rest here, I'll have the parent ID set to, for instance, rock. Its ID is 3, and so we set the parent ID of all these subgenres of rock to the ID of the rock root item. And the same goes for here with jazz and country, and we have some new age items there as well. And then at the end of this, we just need to return this table. That creates our table. Now we want to bind that data to our tree view.
this line here, the rad tree view data source, we're just going to bind it to the data table that the create genre table is returning. And then we want to assign the data tape, the data fields of the rad tree view. So the field ID is set to ID, the parent ID is set to the parent ID. And setting those two data fields is what's going to establish the ID parent ID relationship that creates the hierarchy. And we're also going to set the text field to the text column. And all we have to do after that is to data bind it. Now let's talk about that color field. You'll notice that I was using a method called getColor to populate the color column, but that method doesn't actually exist yet. So let's go ahead and click on the tag right there. If you want to see how to do that, you click on the method and a little thing drops down there and allows you to generate a method for get color. And we're going to add a little bit of code here. First we need a random. We're going to use that in here. And this code, what it does is creates a color converter and then uses a method called from our ARGB that uh, will create a color RGB code and we're filling it with random numbers from this random variable and then convert it to string and return it. That's easy enough. And this color item also needs to be added to our using clauses. The system.drawing contains it. So now get color is populating our color column in our data table. But what do we do with it? Well, let's go to our design view, click on the rad tree view, and when we go to properties and look at the events, we see that in the miscellaneous events there's a no data bound event. We'll double click that and it creates the method, the event for us. And what we're going to do in this method is convert that string in that color column into a color and assign it to the for color property of our node. This events rad node a tree event args has various ways that we can retrieve data associated with the node data bound which is an event that happens when a node is created from data that was bound to the rad tree view control. So this event fires every time an, a node is created. The code we're going to insert in this first we're going to create a data row view, we call it row, and we're going to retrieve the rad tree node event args, which is e dot node dot data item. And that will retrieve the data that was actually used to create this node, including the color column. Next, we need to create a color converter.
and the e dot node dot for color is what we're trying to set. What do we set it to? Well, row and we need to say what row it was. It was the color row. To string and we need to convert this into a color object. So convert from string with the color converter and we need to cast it because convert from string returns an object. So we're casting it to color. Now comes the fun part. Let's run this and see what it looks like. Here's our debug window. We're just going to click OK on that. And it's created our tree view with all kinds of random colors. Snazzy colors there. So we have subgenres for country, subgenres for jazz, subgenres for rock, and a seemingly endless string of subgenres for new age. This concludes the Telerik Rad Tree View hierarchy data binding video. In this video, we took a look at how to bind the Rad Tree View to a data table in a hierarchical structure. Thanks for watching and remember you and I and a little bit of Telerik are making web development easy.